Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question here, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? A lot of people, young and old, think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today we're going to do a ranking of Radiohead. Now, almost too obvious of a choice, right? Because it's, who's better in the 21st century? I mean, I just adore Radiohead. And they are one band I did not get a chance to see. Hmm. Seen a lot of concerts, but never did catch Radiohead in concerts. So for this, I don't need my headphones for this. And I, I did make some notes because there's a lot I want to talk about. There's six albums in the 21st century. And Radiohead made nine albums. So that means two-thirds of their albums are 2000 and beyond. So we're excluding the live album. Uh, I might be wrong. And we're excluding all of their remixes and compilations and all of that sort of thing. So we're left with six albums from 2000 through 2016. So here we go. I'm going to start with this list. And uh, like I say, I am going to read out, uh, read from my notes. Um, I usually try to do these videos off the top of my head. But there were a number of things I wanted to say. So, And I did want you to, to know that uh, later when I'm going to do my top 10, which will follow, that I did check out several non-album tracks. Uh, but right now we're just uh, concentrating on those six and be curious to see what yours is. And coming in at number six is a bit controversial. Because when I read up, almost everybody has King of Limbs at number six. But I'm going to go with 2003's Hail to the Thief. Now, I like the production sound of this album quite a bit. And sonically, it kind of hits a sweet spot for me. But I just don't love, love all the songs. And it certainly opens with a strong track. A two plus two equals five that's a fantastic opener and so it kicks off in a great start and like i say i just i love the production on this album even though nigel godrich did everything and uh look i'm not even reading all my notes right now i'm just talking but i did write down some title tracks here go to sleep the gloaming we suck young blood i will and mixomatosis those five songs those would be my least favorite tracks and they weigh the album down just a little bit. So Go to Sleep is probably my favorite of those five. But those are the five songs that I'm like, I like them. But they're not quite up to the standards I'm used to. So I only have one track from this album on my top ten list. But I could have easily picked three. The songs that are strong are really strong. Are really strong. They're stellar. And uh, I wanted to add just one note on here. I noticed in going through these songs and listening to the lyrics that Tom York, and I think he writes all the lyrics, um, he uses the word suck in more than one song. He seems to have a fascination for that word if you listen to this, <laughs> you listen to this album. But the album does not suck, and I highly recommend this disc meaning that I'm recommending all of them. Uh, all Music gave this album a 4.0. I'm going with three and a half stars, which is a very good rating. It means I recommend it and recommend all the albums. So coming in at number five, now we've got 2011's King of Limbs. And to me, this album sounds like it was recorded prior to 2007's In Rainbows. And I like this album quite a bit. And actually, two tracks made my top ten songs. Uh, but compared to the other five albums, this pales a little on the strength of the compositions. It doesn't bother me that this is the most predictable of all of their 21st century albums. But it feels a little like uh, Amnesiac Light. So Feral and Give Up the Ghost. Those are good songs, but not great in my opinion and then bloom and separator are a little bit better all the other tracks are tracks are strong um now i've read this is not their most electronic album but it almost feels like it and 
I wanted to paraphrase what All Music said in their review. They, and I'm just paraphrasing. There is an iciness to the album that worked on previous ep- efforts, but not so much on this one. I think that kind of sums it up. It, it's hard to put my finger on what's less than perfect of this. Um, there's eight tracks. I like four of them. I love four of them. So all in all, a very good listen. Some people prefer the Live from the Basement disc. I haven't listened to that one yet, and at some point I hope to do so. So uh, I'm at three and a half stars. That's the same that All Music gave it, but I I have the albums uh, flipped around. Uh, My six and five are both three and a half. So I'm a little out of step here. Pitchfork strongly prefers Hail to the Thief, but for me this one just edges out Hail to the Thief based solely on how many tracks I love. And I had this at number six originally, and then on Relist and I switched the two albums, so they're very, very close. Now coming in at number four, see if you guys can figure me out. I've got 2016's A Moonshaped Pool, and I think this album is better than anyone could have expected. Now, apparently, I I read that the track list, it's in alphabetical order, and I guess that's not an accident. That shouldn't work, but the sequencing does work. And it's been six years since their most recent effort, this one, has been released, and I think it's a great one. Uh, The album feels more natural, ambient, and acoustic than any of their other albums in the 21st century. I think Johnny Greenwood's really the star here. There's a lot of great orchestrations and keyboards, wonderful strings throughout. With that said, the opener Burn the Witch comes flying out of the gate with heavy sonic electronic treatments, and I think it's perfectly positioned as the opener before easing into the other tracks. And I really do like the sequencing on this album. Second track, Daydreaming, it also has some treatments, but this time on the vocals, and I think the vibe's a lot different. There's like this bell-like keyboard, and then there's some snoring, somebody snoring uh, in the last minute or so of the song. Um, There's an acoustic guitar intro on track four that's almost shocking for Radiohead. I mean, it's, it's like, they've done acoustics before, but... And that kind of, uh, that's kind of what the album is. It's a nice balance of acoustic instruments and electronics, sometimes track to track, sometimes within the song. I just heard a cricket chirping. He's in the wall. I cannot kill the little bastard. So if you hear that uh, noise, that's uh, a pretty darn loud cricket. But I uh, guess he likes Radiohead too. So anyway, I like every track on this album. The Closer, True Love Waits. That might be my least favorite, but I'm thinking if that's the worst track you got on this album, you've really, really got a winner. So, uh, A Moonshaped Pool, four stars. Really like this album. Number three, I'm going with 2007's In Rainbows. And I still remember how much I paid for the digital download of this album. This was uh, one, the one that you could set your own price. My then wife and I would typically pay $7.99 for a used CD at our favorite record store. So that's what we agreed we would pay. And the point being that I have memories associated with this release. We loved it on first listen. Um, and firstly, I want to mention before I forget that this is one of Radiohead's better set of lyrics, in my opinion. Lots of great lines. Secondly, a lot of very strong melodies throughout. And I, you know, I do, I, I do tend to favor the more melodic Radiohead albums. Um, uh, you know, I mean, it kind of depends. But if there's good melodies and good hooks, I, I'm a little bit more on board. And I I try to, when they break down melodies, I try to get on board with that. And usually I do, but those are tougher listens for me. Um, You know, I think one testament to the strength of this album is no one seems to agree on which are the best tracks. I was looking at all music. They picked Body Snatchers, Weird Fishes, Arpeggi, All I Need, and Jigsaw Falling Into Place. Those were their little AMG picks. 
But then you go to the Guardian that did a they did a list of the 40 best Radiohead songs. They picked four songs: "Nude," "Videotape," "Weird Fishes." Uh, oh, their top one. I'm sorry, their top one was "Reckoner," followed by "Nude," "Videotape," and "Weird Fishes." So there's no agreement there. And you know, personally, I really like the opener, "15 Step." So that only leaves a pair of tracks. Um, and although this did not make my top two, I think it might be the most accessible and enjoyable album for a single listening session. Really like, really, really like In Rainbows. Liked it in 2007, like it in 2022, so 15 years later, still four and a half stars. So now we're down to the two albums recorded at the same time, Kid A and Amnesiac. So which one is it going to be? And this one is a lot closer than you might imagine. Most people pick Kid A hands down over Amnesiac, but I see these two albums as much, much closer in quality. And it's kind of a tough pick, believe it or not. Kid A is more consistent all the way through, but Amnesiac has some of my favorite tracks. And when I made my top 10, I had more tracks from Amnesiac. But I'm going with Amnesiac as expected at number two. And I could have easily picked four songs from this album for my top 10. Ultimately, I chose two. But if I did a top 15 or 20, I think this album would have the most tracks. It'd be the most represented. At least four of the nine songs are among my favorites. But I've decided it's not quite, not quite as strong all the way through. Still, not a bad track on the album. So five stars for Amnesiac. All right, that leaves number one. So along with OK Computer and Amnesiac, Kid A. This is the centerpiece of that trilogy that really put Radiohead on the map. Though the Benz does have its fans. I like Colin, Greenwood, Colin Greenwood's bass and Philip Selway's drums quite a bit on this album and on Amnesiac. So I, I kind of got to talk about those two albums together, but... Everything blends seamlessly with the other members of the band. Um, we think of York and Johnny Greenwood usually first and foremost, but man, the whole band gels on these sessions. And the first four tracks, let's talk about those. Are they awesome or what? You've got everything in its right place. Kid A, the national anthem, and how to disappear completely. Bam, 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 bam. One of the best openers of any album. And then we get an instrumental track. I think that's called Tree Fingers. And uh, that's probably my least favorite on the album, but it gives the, but it's put right in the center, right? It's put right in the center of that album. So it kind of lets you come down a little bit. And then there's four more perfect tracks. Bam, 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 right after that. And then they close with the hidden track. Now on Spotify, they have another track called Untitled. But uh, was this motion picture soundtrack? It was a hidden track. And that's kind of annoying, wasn't it? I mean, I don't know how you guys feel, but that hidden track thing, I don't know why anybody <laughs> ever thought that was interesting. But And I had the book version of this CD. I'll put up a picture right now let you see it. Uh, I really uh, enjoyed that version of it. Uh, but what happened to that was, without going into details about my personal life, I had a divorce. We split some property. Wife got the radio head. She took all the radio head. All of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But that's the way it goes. Um, I got most of the music, but she took the radio head and the white stripes. Hmm. Yep. Anyway, uh, hidden track. I, did, I, I don't know. I just didn't like that. But I'd love to have that back. But to my ears, 
This particular CD is every bit the equal of OK Computer. It's as fine an ensemble set of compositions as you'll find on any disc. Five stars. Kid A. So I give both, both Amnesiac and Kid A five stars with a slight edge for Kid A. So um, not too controversial of a list. Maybe putting um, Hail to the Thief behind King of Limbs. But other than that, probably what you guys would expect. Huge Radiohead fan. Tell me in the comments if you want what your, uh, what your ranking of six would be. And, and again, if you're still in this video and you're new to the channel, I had a couple people on the Bjork who um, were like, hey, you missed this album and you missed that album. And uh, it wasn't clear, I guess, that we were doing 2000 and beyond. So on this channel, we don't discuss anything before 2000 except as it relates to the music we're talking about. So thanks for joining me. Hit that like or subscribe button if you like what we're doing. And as we say here in Mexico, buen dia.